So this is part one of our broadhead testing or my broadhead test. I say ours because uh, Arizona Archery Club had a big hand in everything and they helped me out through a lot of it. But uh, this is this is something that I started and in, in, in a road that I, a rabbit hole that I went down uh, and got them involved. Um, we did a very comprehensive test and I like to check every few years to make sure that I'm shooting the best of what I what I can and uh, I have the best possible setup. Last year, I lost a couple of animals, and uh, the year before, didn't have the greatest season. So you always look for something uh, to improve, you know, something to blame when you have a bad year. Um, so one of the things I wanted to look at was broadheads. And um, I, uh, I wanted to do the most accurate, comprehensive test that I could uh, and having the most accurate data I could a lot of time spent on this a whole lot of time spent on this we we were testing things to to figure out how we were going to test um, lots of setup time I don't know if anybody's ever used a hooter shooter or not but it is painstaking to get that thing perfect and get everything set up the way you want to so having that thing set up for all multiple different uh trial and error and uh before i went down to broadhead test i wanted to make sure i had the perfect arrow uh so that people couldn't debunk what i was coming up with or have a problem with what i was coming up with so uh all my arrows were done within one grain of each other uh i did a bunch of vein testing to make sure we had the most perfect flight possible with broadheads uh, so I did. A, there was a lot of like a couple months of testing before I even began began the uh, broadhead test. Um, we did sharpness testing. We checked the deviation of the broadheads, meaning uh, we weighed each individual head and saw how much they uh, deviated or how much difference in weight there were in, from head to head. Also from from the actual listed weight so if it was a 125 broadhead um you know how far off was it from 125 so we did all that uh we did spin testing did sharpness testing uh using a machine the way you would cut it and would um, basically give you a readout that says how much pressure it took to cut uh, very specific line that's on this uh, machine and so the lower the pressure the sharper your th your broadhead is and actually I'm holding uh, one of the number one picks there was two that were hit exactly the same and it was a QAD Exodus and this is the iron will um, these are where the were the two sharpest broadheads actually um, and uh, most of them fell around the same around the same um, and you'll see that that's what this video is going to be the sharpness and the deviation, the, the preliminary stuff. Uh, part two will be the shooting where we're doing um, long range accuracy indoors, outdoors. Uh, and then we have quartering shot video and penetration video. So one of the first things we're doing for this broadhead test is testing the sharpness. And so we're gonna test the sharpness before and uh, we're gonna save one broadhead out of the broadheads that we have per per type uh, when we do the basically sharpest retention test. We're gonna shoot through um, media several times and then test the sharpness based on the sharpness out of the box right now. So basically the way it works, we're gonna have this industrial meter here. There's a little thread on this and it measures the pressure that it takes for the blade to cut through that. So we put it here and then you, you know, apply pressure and it cuts through that. And uh, it's gonna be painstaking, <laughs> take a lot of time to do, but uh, I think it's worth it. We're gonna try to do about three baselines test, take the average of, of it for, uh, for each broadhead. And, um, and then we'll do the same thing again once we've shot it through um, the media to uh, 
to see how well it holds holds an edge and for how long it holds an edge, and then we'll give it a value. So uh, that's number one of the uh, of the testing is testing the sharpness out of the box. All right, here you'll find the results to part one, our preliminary testing of the broadheads. Um, over here you'll find the sharpness, and this is what I was talking about where we uh, cut through the filament, the thread, and it gives you a reading here. As you can see, like Kudu uh, at rank number two, uh, Exodus was number one. And it was tied for number one with Iron Will as this two sharpest at the exact same. Um, so with that, it was uh, assigned a score. Uh, we then saved that broadhead and we used that broadhead to um, do the quartering test and to shoot through a, a piece of um, Hardy backer, and then we shot it, or excuse me, we tested it again on the sharpness for sharpness retention. So these are the values, as you can see. Again, I'll take Kudu because it's at the top here, nice and easy to see. Uh, 192, and after being shot through what I just discussed, it dropped down to a 290, so the loss was 98, and it ranked number 16. Uh, where VPA, uh, the two blade, it wasn't super sharp to begin with. Uh, it was a 667, was number 29. Um, and But after shooting through all that stuff, it only lost 2%, you know, two uh, units. And that was our number one. So you can see here, um, the list goes down. And you could see the, like I said, the rank and then the score. Um, our scoring was weighted, so for the throughout the whole test, um, for instance, sharpness to me is, I mean, it, it's it it's a thing to measure, but ultimately, if the broadhead has really good penetration and has good sharpness, then it should be. So that value is a very low weight. It's a single digit late, uh, weighted score where something like the long range accuracy or the field point, uh, field point accuracy, those are high, weighted much higher. So you'll see that throughout the test. Um, you can see here, this is our deviation uh, stuff on the testing right here. Um, and each broadhead in, in a pack was weighed. So you can see Kudu was super, super high tolerance, 125.1, uh, 125, .1, 125, and 125, as opposed to something like, uh, I don't know, let's see, what's this one right here? Uh, the Northern Wide Cuts was 127, 123, 124. Um, so there was an average weight and there's a deviation in the pack. And then also, that we uh, gave you the value of deviation listed from, from the listed grain, basically. So if it was a grain, all these, most of these were 125 grain. So as you can see, like this particular broadhead was listed at 125 with six grains off of that. Or, you know, this was four and a half, four and point nine grains off of that. And those were, let's see, um, the dirt nap. The sever, uh, this afflictor four blade was six grains off. So, you know, those are things to consider, um, consistency and stuff like that. We then went and did what's called the, um, excuse me, I'm uh, losing my spot here. We did a kinetic energy consumption test. And that, honestly, this to me didn't mean a whole lot. Uh, we did it as a just like we did with the drag test. And you'll see that when we get to uh, the long range shooting stuff, you'll see how that falls into place. But this is just to kind of see where, this should fall in line basically with your penetration stuff. Um, you know, the, the kinetic energy consumption, the, the ones that 
got have a sharper tip and uh, enter should ultimately penetrate better. Um, and we'll see if that's the case or not uh, once we do the penetration testing.